I just finished Firestorm, Season 1, Episode 10 of The Orville. I think this may have been my favorite episode of the series so far. I loved every minute of this episode and I was on the edge of my seat trying to figure out where this episode was going and I absolutely loved it from start to finish. I know I tend to play it very fast and loose with spoiler warnings on this channel because I think you are adults on the internet and if you see a video talking about an episode that was just released it will probably have spoilers for that episode, but regardless Spoiler warning, if you have not seen this episode, put me on pause right now, go over to whatever streaming service or television channel or other medium that you enjoy this show on, and go watch this episode. I will not be the one to spoil the ending for you. This episode is one that you'll want to watch going in blind. So I'm just going to break down the overall plot of this episode and tell you all of my favorite things about it and the few things that I guess I didn't like, although honestly, I don't have a lot of negative things to say about this episode. It was an absolute joy. So the premise of this episode is that the Orville is caught in a plasma storm that puts the ship in peril. The engine room catches fire and a piece of debris falls and lands on a crewman. The chief of engineering, and, or the chief engineer and a couple of other crewmen try to lift the debris off and rescue him, but they're not strong enough, so they call up to the bridge to get Alara down there so that she can help them. She sprints down to the engine room and she immediately freezes upon seeing the enormous fire that's broken out in this room. And by the time that she regains her composure, the crewman's already dead and it's too late for her to do anything. The rest of the episode is basically an intense study of Alara's survivor's guilt, and it's interesting as well because there are some follow-ups to things we've seen with her character before. She's very young and given a role with a lot of responsibility, and she has a lot of issues with having confidence and feeling as if she's earned that responsibility and if, as if she's capable of handling it. We've seen it before, and so here seeing it culminate once more in a really major character moment for her is a great follow-up and just shows us so much about how deeply this series cares about its characters and about really forming consistent storylines for them even while it plays in this very episodic sort of way. We see a scene where Ed Mercer gives a speech about fallen comrades and there's a lovely eulogy that is given by the chief engineer and Alara's face throughout all of this is very conflicted and very obviously guilty. We also get to see her have a conversation with her parents over space Skype, I guess. And her dad is played by Robert Picardo, who played the doctor in Star Trek Voyager. I loved his cameo because it was a very doctor-like sort of character in terms of delivery and the fact that he's very anti-military. And I found it very interesting that they kind of put that in there, that the Salaeans, who are renowned for their physical strength, are a peaceful and fairly anti-military species. And that was interesting to juxtapose with humanity, especially because in the United States in particular, there is a lot of hero worship and celebration of both veterans and troops. And so I thought that that little tidbit was just really well placed and very interesting and gave you a little bit more to think about. We then see her on the in the simulator, or this series version of a holodeck. She's working out at the gym, beating the crap out of a punching bag to the point where she breaks the punching bag. We then see Commander Grayson and Dr. Finn come in and they attempt to assuage some of her guilt by reasoning with her and talking about how the crewman had such severe injuries that even if she had been able to save him, it's unlikely that he would have survived. But that doesn't really seem to do much in terms of making her feel better. She still feels completely responsible. We then get this much needed moment of levity where Lamar and Malloy enter wearing some kind of revolutionary regalia. I don't know if it's French revolutionary or if it's American revolutionary or if it's some Three Musketeers stuff. History buffs, please let me know what those costumes are in the comments down below. But they, of course, are very offended that Alara is still in the simulator as they had reserved it for three. And Dr. Grayson shoes, or uh, Commander Grayson shoes them out and while they're walking out, Malloy says, why even have reservations? And 
then a couple seconds later, Bordas enters in a matching costume. And I'm so sad that we missed out on Lamar, Malloy, and Bordas's holodeck shenanigans because it would have been so good. I would have loved that. I know it wouldn't have worked with the episode. I just, I need to see more Bordas. I feel like Bordas is such an underused resource on this show. I need more Bordas episodes. So then things start to get weird. Alara's walking down a hallway and she sees this horrifying green-haired clown running around and she runs after it and then it disappears down a hallway. Then she sees it later and gets in a fight with it. And at first I was very, very, very confused by this. I was trying to figure out, is this going some kind of a weird it in space Pennywise ripoff? Is this what's happening? Is it some kind of entity who shapeshifts and has something to do with the fears of the crew menu. I, I had no idea what exactly they were going for and I was very nervous that it was going to go into a very strange place, but it didn't. This episode had some genuinely freaky moments though. Overall we see spiders, we see heights, we see isolation, surgery, and evil Isaac. I think one of the scariest moments was actually evil Dr. Finn though. She straps Alara down and attempts to perform surgery again on her against her will and then brutally murders a nurse who's trying to help her and honestly that scene was was scary but the scarier scene is when they have Dr. Finn and she's locked up in the brig and she gives that speech do you watch the darkness oh my god I loved that scene. That scene alone increased the creep factor of the episode so much. It was a little bit hammy, but it honestly reminded me of, I think the episode, I think it's Midnight of Doctor Who, where there's the knocking and everyone's freaking out. And I also thought that it was very reminiscent of episode f three of Firefly, Bushwhacked in which they talk about where Reavers come from. Now, if you've watched Serenity, you know that's not actually where Reavers come from, but in that episode they talk about how it's men who spent too much time on the outer reaches of space staring into the darkness and they went mad. And so, for me, all of that context made that speech extra creepy and I was almost wondering if there was some kind of something impacting all of the crew that was making them act this way and whether or not we'd see more characters acting, well, out of character. And yeah, that scene for me, I think, was probably the best scene in the episode. I thought the way they did it was just incredible. And then we see Alara all alone on the ship, and she has to escape evil Isaac, and <laughs> she ends up flying a shuttle out over a burning entryway to show that she's conquered her fear of fire, and then the simulation ends because it was a simulation the whole time that Alara set up for herself to test if she had any other fears besides fire and whether or not she could overcome them. And I did not see the simulation ending coming. That came out of absolutely nowhere for me. When, when they revealed that it was a simulation, I was just shocked. And they do detail a lot of how it happened, how she went and cons the doctor into doing a memory wipe after she set up the arrangements for the simulation so that she doesn't know that it's a simulation. And... All in all, I don't know if it was the best plot in the world. I did like that they used Directive 38, which is a law in this universe that a security officer can override a captain's orders in certain circumstances. The idea is that it's supposed to be a check on the captain in case the captain experiences some negative undue influence or is too drunk to fly the ship, I guess. And... Of course, she misuses Directive 38, and normally that's a career ender, but there's just a bunch of leniency, so they're okay with it. So I thought that that was a little bit of, like, a it felt a little rushed at the very end there when they tried to explain it all. But overall, this episode, the way they built it up, the way they really harnessed the creep factor, the way they used comic relief in just the right moments, this is why I love this show. This is why I keep coming back. This is such an amazing show. So... Again, just a few of my favorite lines or moments in this episode. I really did like the eulogy scene. I also loved Ed's letter writing scene where he refers to Lieutenant Payne, the crewman who died, as a neat guy. And they, they decide to just have Kelly write it. I love that Robert Picardo refers to humans as the hillbillies of the galaxy. 
and I I think my one of my other favorite moments in the entire episode was when Bordas recounts his encounter with an alligator to the captain. Apparently he crushed an alligator with a chair and then when the captain follows up to ask some more questions about this incident, Bordas simply says, regardless, it was crushed. And for me that was such a wonderful like wharf moment, kind of, that it, it just endeared Bordas to me further and cemented my opinion that we need more Bordas in this series. And damn it, I still need to hear Bordas sing. And I'm sure they won't let me hear it this season, which is very disappointing. So that is everything I have for you for now on this episode. Again, it was one of my favorite episodes and in the next few weeks after we finish season one, I will be coming out with a top five or top three episodes video. So keep a lookout for that. If you like my videos, subscribe. If you don't, I am sure that you will tell me. And let me know what you thought of this episode in the comments down below. That is everything that I have for you. Peter Zane.